Welcome to a rather wet and windy Liverpool. It's my hometown. And also the hometown of four very famous singers. If you don't know who the Beatles are, then you really need to take a long, hard look at yourself. They're only the best-selling artists in the world. 600 million records wow. they've sold. Liverpool is their hometown. John, Paul, Ringo and George. So let's go and have a look around. And explore Liverpool. Without the Beatles, there wouldn't be any Taylor Swift or Ed Sheeran or any of these kind of modern no, bands be. because no. the Beatles were so formative. The 1960s, they basically changed the popular music world. And they were, of course, iconic to Liverpool because they were four scouts. Yeah, they were born here. So in this tour, we're going to be showing you the childhood homes. Some of the inspirations for their songs. And just generally how Liverpool is connected with the Beatles. I've grown my hair long for this tour, guys. You are, you're rocking yeah. you. John the Lennon. 60s Beatles look, yes. Yeah. The Beatles, John, Paul, Ringo and George, first started to find fame in the 60s where they played at an iconic Liverpool venue. I think we should go there now to the Cabin Club. I'm wearing my rose-coloured glasses I tell you what I see You are still here with me Cabin Club. Um, excuse me. What? Thank you. I know where we're going. Using a map? Yeah. You're born and bred in Liverpool and you don't know where these places are. Yeah, but this are. is one of the interesting things about Liverpool. So all of this is brand new, pretty much. In 2008, it was capital of culture. Those super lamb bananas that we keep seeing were a symbol of the Liverpool's capital of culture, European capital of culture. And all of this, Liverpool won, was done in 2008. I mean, that's no excuse, because that was ages ago. But... Absolutely no reference to the Beatles whatsoever there, but never mind. I'm explaining why I don't know my way around. Right. Because all of this is new. Okay. Gone the wrong way. Under your wing, everything is alright. So behind us is the Beatles story. Yeah, so if you want to know even more about the Beatles, then head here. Yeah, check this out for even more facts. But onwards. And I wouldn't say that it's been a hard time. We made it to Matthew Street, Cavern Quarter. This is a wall of famous people who have played at the Cabin Club. It's called the Cabin Wall of Fame. Now, if you're not famous, you don't get a name on the wall, so... No, but there is one famous name on the wall that I have spotted that we have also done a video I spotted about. it. Well, you have spotted the name, I told you it was there. Paolo Lutini. Mm -hmm. So everything's come full circle. Our last video, we went to the hometown of Paolo Lutini, which is Barga in Tuscany. We did, so if you haven't watched that video, then check that one out, out. after you've watched this one. Yeah. So let's go and have a look around the Cabin Club. I think we should. Music. It is. It's so cool. And you can say that about Liverpool. A music city. But yeah, this is the Cavern Quarter. Why was the Cavern Club famous then? Well, it was where the Beatles became famous. Yes, they played a number of concerts between 1961 and 63. They did. They played just under 300 of them. Yeah, so when they obviously left Liverpool for the world fame famous tour, then um, they played their last concert here in 1963. Aha, uh -huh. and there's the original entrance to the Cabin Club. Yeah, there you go. So, um, where we're going to go, you can't actually claim as the original one. No, no, so they um, they used, what, 70% of the bricks or something they, from I the original? It's on 70% of the original site. Yeah. So it was a bit confusing, there was a whole article that I read about it, and I had to read it several times and I'm still very confused. <laughs> but they moved it because when the Beatles became famous, it went bankrupt. It did, yes. So they left and the hole in the incomes, because the Beatles weren't playing there anymore, nobody wants to go to the Cabin Club, so and the business shut down. Somebody else bought the name of it and moved it opposite the road. And then they decided yeah. that they wanted to rebuild it or something, so they had to ex excavate it. Yep. But the bricks were too fragile to rebuild it, so then they moved it back 70% of its... I don't know. That's very confusing. confusing, yeah. So yeah, it's actually fine. The Cabin Club. <laughs>
biggest club in the world. This is where the Beatles played 292 times they played here, between 60 and 63. But uh, this room's quite special for us because this is where Tom McCartney played. Like a heart, I didn't know this one. Just call on me, call on me, call on me. Like a heart, I didn't know this one. You say you found the story all tucked away in the back of the room, been lost for years. Here you go. Sorry, both right. 274 times. Well, I think it was almost 300. All right. But it was rebuilt to the exact dimensions as the original. Oh, there you go. So it was demolished in 1973. That's Matthew Street and the Cannon Club. So that was amazing. Yeah, a really cool place, isn't it? So it's five pounds to get in. Yep. But it's definitely well worth it. They have live music playing all the time. All around us, yes. And yes. it's just great. There's lots of men memorabilia as well. They actually organised the Magical Mystery Tour. Tour. Roll Roll up for the mystery tour. Do you know that song? No, I don't know that song. Oh, right. I did tell you I didn't know much about Beatles. It's a Beatles. famous Beatles song. But in Liverpool, you can even capture the... Ca capture? Catch the magical mystery tour bus. You can. Which We're not going us. to, but no, you can. No, because we know where it goes. I'm going to show you. Nah, definitely catch it. Recommended. If you're going to do this properly, do the uh, magical mystery tour bus. Well, we find out about where the Beatles got their success. But let's find out about the rest of their life story. Yeah, so we're heading to the south of Liverpool, where they grew up and they met. And where they found inspiration for some of their most famous songs. I thought I would run you through some of the many facts about the Beatles that I found. OK. I found a few. Fire away. So, as we've just visited the Cavern Club, I bet you didn't know that the Beatles, per performance, were paid around about three pounds and... 15 shillings. Wow, this road is bumpy. Three pounds and 15 shillings back then. Oh, was that an equivalent money today? Well, we'll write that below what the equivalent of that is today, because I have no idea. I bet you also didn't know that some of the many Beatles songs were banned by the BBC because they had naughty references in. So, I am a, the walrus. Walrus. Walrus, walrus, yes. walrus. I am the walrus. That was choo -coo -choo 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 -choo. banned because it mentions knickers. And that was a naughty word back then. So when that song came out, the BBC refused to play it. Well, the obvious one would be Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which abbreviated is LSD. Ah, now you say that. But actually, I found out that that song was never written about LSD. It was just coincidence, apparently, that that's what the initials are. It was actually written about... I'm looking down because I'm reading my notes. It was John Lennon's daughter. No, it wasn't his daughter. It, well, you know, you got that fact wrong. It was not his daughter, the son, bought a picture home of a girl sat under some stars apparently and the girl's name was Lucy it was his son's classmate called uh, Lucy right okay. and that's where Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds came from and the song Hey Jude Hey Jude mm. do, 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 do. famously made Hey Dude by Ed Sheeran Hey Dude Well, it actually started life as Hey Jules. Hey Jules? Yeah, because okay. Paul actually wrote it for John Lennon's son, who was called Julian. I uh, see, that's why I was getting mixed up. Yeah, I thought yep. you were. Jules. And then it became Hey Jude. I'm not sure why, but it just, his name got changed. And my last fact for you. So strange as it sounds, this has got a Beatles connection. So, the working title for yesterday was Scrambled Eggs. Scrambled eggs, oh baby, how I love your eggs, but not as much as I like scrambled eggs. I do like scrambled eggs. Did you say legs or eggs? Legs. Okay. Not as much as I like your legs. And another fun fact for you is yesterday is actually the most re-recorded song ever. And there are over 3,000 versions of that one song. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. But now we are on the bus. Heading to South Liverpool. South Liverpool. My stomping grounds where it I grew is. up. And where John Lennon and Paul McCartney also grew up. So join us there in a minute when we get there off this bus. Oh, first port of call in South Liverpool. 
is Paul McCartney's old house. It is, and it's actually owned by the National Trust now. Mm. And the only way you could get in is if you book a tour with the yeah. National Trust. Be like those people and book a tour. But there is no filming allowed, so even if we booked a tour, we still wouldn't be in the show. It's pretty cool. It's like a really like, normal 60s house. And actually, my claim to fame is that I live pretty much opposite this. So we've arrived at Men Love Avenue. We have, and the home of John Lennon. Mm, childhood home. Well, he moved here when he was five, didn't he? He did, back in 1946. His mother lived not that far away from here, actually. But her yeah. then boyfriend at the time basically said, I don't want to look after yeah. John. Put him in with his aunt and uncle, who lived here. Yeah. So that's where he lived until he was 22 years yeah. old. This is National Trust again. If you're going to go book on that minibus tour, then you can look inside these houses. You can you look inside can, Paul and John's. It wasn't always a National Trust property. No. So the National Trust acquired Paul McCartney's house because they thought it had great significance that yeah. the songs were written there. Yeah. But they weren't interested in Lennon's house because. They said that none of the songs were composed or written there. Yeah, it was later found out that one or two were. So it did have value. So back in... 2002. In Yoko Ono, his former wife, actually bought the house when she saw it coming up for sale and donated it to the National Trust because she wanted Lennon's memory mm. and the Beatles' memories to live on. And so give it back she, to the people of Liverpool. Yeah, so she donated it. But another fun fact for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fun you are fun for fun. fun facts. In 2000, this house was used for the American TV film In His Life, which was a film about John Lennon and his life, I guess. And the then owner of this house allowed the film crew to come in and actually knock down a staircase in order to get the film equipment in, so they're not like us, you know. Yeah. Small cameras. That's bonkers. But 150 bricks were taken out and then sold on to Beatles fans. Bet you a pretty penny they would nowadays. They did, yeah. And one more fun fact for you is that every, I don't know why I sound excited about this fun fact, because it's quite sad actually, but every year on the anniversary of Lennon's death, the National Trust keep the light on in the smaller window. That was his bedroom. So yeah. they keep the light on burning all night. Um, in his memory, in his, his honour. Yeah. Yes. But anyway, that's his home, and if you want to go and tour that and Paul McCartney's home, we'll leave a link in the description to the National Trust tours. They're definitely worth looking mm. onto. The guides are really, really knowledgeable. They're a wealth of knowledge, and unlike the, us. The house has actually been restored back to... Yeah, it's, it's it how it was in the 40s, 50s, which is yes. pretty cool. The National and Trust also. restored it back yeah. after Yoko Ono donated it to them. Mm. Anyway, onwards. We're just going to go around the corner to Strawberry Fields. Strawberry Fields forever! And these are the famous gates to Strawberry Fields. They are. Strawberry Field, I should say, not Strawberry Fields. John Lennon used to play here. When he he did. Was so he only lived around the corner, and this was his kind of stomping ground as a kid. It was the Salvation Army's children's home or something? It was, yes. And now you can walk around. It's a beautiful garden that's been recently done up. It does it lovely. Mm. And also, there's a lot of the Beatles memorabilia. Yes. There's a big collection of stuff in there, yes. And one of the things that's in there is actually the piano that John Lennon wrote Imagine on. So not the white piano that's in the music video. It's actually an upright Stein way. Yes, it's brown. brown. And it actually belonged, as we found out today, to George Michael. It's the Fab Four tour again. It actually belonged to George Michael, and he donated it back here um, just before he died. We'll give them a view of Strawberry Fields so they can take a picture if they want. Mm. We're very nice. But yeah, it's obviously very popular with tourists taking selfies and writing their name on the wall. Do you know that these gates are an actual replica of the originals? The originals were stolen. Somebody overnight crushed them in the back of the van, sold them to a scrap dealer who bought them in good faith, but then later realised that they were the Strawberry Field gates. So donated them back to the Salvation Army. If you go in the gardens themselves, deep in the gardens, they're hidden. So somewhere in there are the original Strawberry Field gates. And I think it's about £12 entry to get in. Yeah, so well worth it. It's a beautiful place and obviously for a good cause as well. Yes. Um, but we are on a tight schedule and it's about to rain again, so we're going to give this one a miss and we're going to head to Penny Lane. Are we or are we going to Eleanor Rigby? Oh, yeah. ah, stay Rigby. tuned and you'll, yeah, find, you'll out. find out. You'll never know. Well, we're here at St Peter's Church in Walton. We are, and this is the special place where 
Paul and John first met all those years ago back in 1957. Absolutely, so John was playing as the Quarryman, the name of his first band, named after the Quarry Bank School, which is actually where my dad went to school. So John Lennon was in the top year and my dad was in the bottom year, so they were at the same school at the same time. That Just is your claim to fame, claim to isn't fame. it? But this is also home to a very famous uh, lady, synonymous with the Beatles. Yes, Eleanor Rigney. Her grave is somewhere around here and we're going to find it for you. said that uh, the song Eleanor Rigby, he didn't get the inspiration from the name, mm. from the grave, and it was just a happy coincidence that there happens to be a grave where they first met. It's that Eleanor interesting Rigby. subconscious thing that you see things in your life and they form a subconscious connection. And actually it was written about an elderly lady that he used to essentially look after. Yeah, he used to help out. And she lived alone and her name was apparently Eleanor Rigby. So it's a coincidence that there's yes. a grave where they first met. We're struggling to find them. We are. I reckon we should look over there. We found it. Oh, there it is, yes. My dear husband, John Rigby, who departed this life. Also Francis, also Eleanor Rigby. Rigby the beloved wife of Thomas Wood. She died in 1939 and she was only 44 years old. So John and Paul and all the rest of the Beatles would never have known her. No. Um, but there she is, so here she, where she lies. Anyway, onwards to Penny Lane, another famous Beatles song. Yes. Penny Lane. We've made it. We have. Penny Lane is in my brain. So this must be the original Penny Lane sign because all the others and not covered up. There aren't any barber shops or banks or fire stations or anything along here, are there? No, it's a bit just it's a bit of a weird one. It must be all the way up there. So yes, have a walk up there. Penny Lane. It's in my brain. I actually don't know the lyrics. Of that Penny song. Lane. It's in my ears and in my eyes. Oh, not in my brain. But you can see all the things that they talked about here. That is the genuine shelter at the middle of the roundabout. It used to be a bistro, but as far as I've known it, it's never been open. Just by the Bernardo store, just up there. That's the bank. The fire station is not on Penny Lane. Uh. The fire station's about a mile away from here. So they lie. So again, yes, artistic license. And then the other side of you is the hairdressers. Yep, if we spin round, we could go to the place that I need to go. Tony Slavin. I think the Beatles probably got their haircuts there. I certainly did. So there you go. These are all of the places that inspired them to write the song about Penny Lane. Penny Lane. Yeah. And my old school's up there as well, so it's all, it's all local to me. I know Penny Lane very well. You do. Oh, wow. Oh, rest my legs. Oh. What a day. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our take on the Beatles story. But Liverpool isn't just the Beatles. There's a lot more to the city than that. And if you would like to see us explore the rest of the city, then make sure you comment down below. And in the meantime, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in a video really soon. Bye. Bye.